Uh, welcome to uh, this demo of Tabletop Manager, uh, Tabletop Baseball Manager. And my name is Brian Hafferkamp. I'm the designer of this game and also on base and on base advanced and quick play baseball. So it's been a busy year <laughs> for making things. Um, this is actually sort of uh, an extended version of quick play baseball. You'll you'll recognize if you played quick play you'll recognize these situation cards here uh, but quite a few other elements have been added in i'm not going to really go through those i did a video uh, explaining all the different <clears throat> um, game pieces uh, but we have our situation cards our game board these are the roll cards so for the different player types I have ground balls and fly ball cards, and then over here, sort of down into my right, you can't see them, but I have all the uh, the different manager cards. Now, I haven't played so much that I'm just like in the groove of using the manager cards, so this is a little bit like maybe if you were playing uh, starting out. Uh, I am going to play the 61, I mean the 1960 Yankees against the... Pirates. So this is a World Series game, Game 7, and I have those lineups here. Um, I played this one, one game already, and I just wanted to sort of quickly get into a game with the rating. I have the ratings of the players here already. So these are as played, as played lineups. I'm not planning to do any substitutions or anything, but uh, you could do substitutions as well, and these pitchers should be E. Okay, so that was before I made the pitcher batting cards. Okay, so uh, the way we start is you just flip a situation card, and the top of the first inning is going to start uh, with nobody on and one out, so no runners on, and we'll just go ahead and set it to one out, and the Yankees are up. The two here means that we go down, so not Bobby Richardson, but Kubek. Um, is going to be the shortstop in this game, and he's going to uh, be swinging first. And so I've got to pull up some sort of roller here. Okay, so I have my dice roller ready to go. It is up here off screen. You can't see it, so I'll just tell you what the numbers are whenever they come out. So Kubek is up. Um, Law is pitching in this game. doesn't come into play a lot uh, as the pitchers aren't figured in yet. Uh, but the first roll is a 4-4, four, 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 which is an 8. And Quebec is a D. So we look at the D card. A D for an 8 is going to be a strikeout. So first, second, out, I mean, uh, yeah, so that brings us to two outs. Uh, and then we go down one, and it's going to be Roger Maris. Maris is an A. So we get a roll. A five for Maris is going to be a fly ball. So we pull a fly ball card. And for an A, that's going to be a fly out to left center field. So we'll just say F8. That ends the inning. And uh, nobody on. <clears throat> no runs scored. And we go to the bottom of the first inning. So Pittsburgh gets the bases loaded. <clears throat> so we set our, our inning here. Bases loaded, one out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play... I'm going to play the infield here at double play depth. That way, uh, on a 3 through 10, for a ground ball to second or shortstop, a 3 through 10, is a double play so you have a pretty a heightened chance at a double play now though it's a five here so we say one two three four five it's going to be roberto clemente that year he was a a c which means his batting runs was between zero and 20. and so when we roll that's going to be a six a six for clemente is a ground ball And for a C, it's a two hopper to third base. So third baseman's going to go uh, to first base. So no, 
no special anything. We're just at double play depth, not corners in or anything like that. So run's going to score. These two runners are going to come up and we're going to get the out at first base. So let's say that's going to be 5-3 with an RBI. So a little, <clears throat> a little two hop ground ball to third base scores the run. We're going to take the double play off the table since there's no double play situation anymore. And next up is Burgess, the catcher. He is also a C. And so a five for Burgess is going to be a strikeout. And that will end the inning as the Pirates get one on the Clemente ground out, RBI ground out. And so after one inning, Pirates are up one nothing. Game seven of the 1960 World Series. So the Yankees load the bases in the bottom, top of the second, sorry. Uh, nobody out. So this could be a big inning for them. And we'll go down one, two, three, four. It's going to be Blanchard, the catcher. He is a D. And we're going to roll. Not going to do anything special at this point on defense. And uh, the offense isn't doing anything special either. So a nine. Nine's going to be a ground ball. For a D, uh, second baseman makes a diving stop. And for me, that means uh, run scores. Everybody moves up. Second baseman makes a play to first. So that's going to be 4 3 on the put out with an RBI. So RBI ground out from Blanchard. <clears throat> Next up is Cleet Boyer. Uh, still. Not going to do anything special here necessarily. It's pretty early in the ball game. We should move that up. And we get uh, a roll of a three. Boyer is also a D. A three is a fly ball. And it's a fly out to right center field. Uh, I'll show you the tag up mechanism. Just because, you know, there's one out. And we'll try to tag up from third. So we drop down the tag up card and you can see on a two, there's an error on the throw. All runners will advance one base, three to six, lead runner will be out and the other runners don't advance. Seven to 10, lead runner is safe and no advance. On 11, the lead runner is safe and then everybody else advances one base. And then on a 12, the throws cut off. Um, and this runner would score, and this runner would be out on a rundown. So that would score, but it would also create an out. So um, depending on what this roll is, is how the play will turn out. <clears throat> it's a five, so that means the lead runner is out here with no advance from here. So thrown out, tagging up, not a surprise. Uh, with the fly ball to right field. It's Clemente's territory out there. <clears throat> and then the pitcher coming up. It's okay to go ahead and try with the pitcher coming up, I think. So an eight. And off the pitcher card, that is a strikeout. So Pittsburgh gets out of that inning having given up only one run. Bases loaded nobody out and they only gave up one sometimes that happens sometimes you give up five runs <laughs> so it's just like regular baseball <clears throat> all right so let's reset the inning here bottom of the second inning uh, nobody on and one out for Pittsburgh and that's going to be Bill Mazeroski the hero of the real game seven the shot heard around the world and um, he is a D so let's go and roll that's gonna be at nine a nine off a D is gonna be a ground ball and for a D it's a slow grounder to short and that's gonna be out number two brings up the pitcher spot and 
That's a four. A four to the E is going to be a ground ball. Pull our ground ball card. And instead of playing uh, an E, I don't have any E's over here, but it's going to be a D that I play it off of. So that's going to be actually a, a base hit. The runner on first with two outs in the inning. Burden at, at uh, steps to the plate with two outs. Runner on first inning or our first base. That's gonna be an eight and eight for a C player is gonna be a, a strikeout. So that will end the inning. <clears throat> no runs on one hit and one left on. So we go to the top of the third inning. Scores tied one one. Yankees situation is a runner on first with nobody out. And they have Quebec back up to the plate. What we're going to do is uh, sacrifice. <clears throat> and with a weak hitter at the plate, we'll just lay down a sack bunt. There's our sack bunt card. Sorry, it's trying to work around this. Uh, camera a little bit. So a sacrifice bunt on a two, it's an error on the throw to first. On a three, it's an unsuccessful bunt and this lead runner would be out. Um, and a four to 12, the bunt is successful. It's a five and so that's a successful bunt. Runner at second base, so one out. Uh, the runner at second is uh, Richardson, Bobby Richardson. <clears throat> Doesn't really make much difference as far as the speed um, at this point in the game. So let's just call this uh, sack bunt. And brings up Roger Maris to the plate. So Maris and Mantle. Get a couple of cracks at it here. And we're going to pitch to them. There's a five, a five on man, man, uh, Maris's card is going to be a fly ball. And a fly ball for an A pitcher or A hitter is going to be a fly out to center field. So a runner holds, brings up Mickey Mantle. Mantle also an A player. So a nine for Mantle is going to be a K. So Pirates get out of that one, so that was uh, Maris and then Mantle. So Pirates get out of that one. Um, it's still 1-1, one one, going into the bottom of the third inning. So we set our situation, two outs, nobody on. And we go 1-2-3, it's going to be Nelson, the first baseman, <clears throat> up for the Pirates. He is a C. And we have a 10. 10 is going to be a walk. So Nelson draws the walk. Runner on first base now with two outs. And Clemente back to the plate. He's also a C. That's a two for Clemente. It's going to be a home run. So he hits a two-run home run. Which gives Pittsburgh the lead. So that's a home run there. Uh, two runs in in the inning, and Burgess back to the plate. Also a C. An 11 is going to be a ground ball. And for a C, that's going to be a ground ball to third. So it's going to be 5-3 on the put out. And that will end the inning, but not before the damage is done by Clemente. Pirates get two runs off of his two-run home run. So the walk turned out to be really big. And... Uh, Clemente comes through with the home run. So we go to the top of the third. <clears throat> one out and a runner on third. And let's go down. One, two, three. Up to bat's going to be Blanchard. He's a D. Catcher for the Yankees. Um, I'm just going to pitch to him with the lead. So it's going to be a five. It's going to be a ground ball. It's a slow grounder to second base, so it's going to be an RBI ground out to second. That's his 
his second RBI ground out. So we trade an out for a run, and that uh, makes the score now 3-2 to two, Pittsburgh. And next up is Cleet Boyer. He's a D. So a 7 is going to be a fly ball. Fly ball for a D is a fly out. The center fielder comes in and makes a diving catch. Center fielder is burden for the, the Pirates. So that's going to be F8, and that ends the inning. Pirates do give up one, and the Yankees get within one of the lead. Still three to two, Pittsburgh. So we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Nobody on, nobody out. Next batter down is uh, Hoke. Hoke is a C player. So we get a seven. Seven is going to be a fly ball. Fly ball to a C is going to be a triple down the right field line. So a three bagger. And that puts a runner at third base with nobody out. Still nothing going with the Yankees. We're going <clears> to <throat> let's go ahead and walk. Mazeroski will set up the double play. So intentional walk there. And brings up the pitcher spot. So pitcher spot. We'll just have them bunt. Let's see if we can lay it down successfully. That's a five, so that's going to be a successful bunt there. They'll trade one run to get two in position. I don't know, you kind of get caught in between here. You know, it's, uh, you know, what would you do? <laughs> How would you play it? I know Kurt Bergman, you know, had some some different scenarios and things like that that he, he's put on his website. And it does make you think, like, what would you do in that situation? Here you're in the middle of the game. Uh, you're up by one. We, when are you going to trade outs for runs? Uh, when are you going to start bringing, you know, shifting the infield, outfield? Uh, it really sort of puts some put some pressure on you to start making some <laughs> decisions instead of just letting the the dice figure it out for you. So, uh, Verdon is a C. And back to the top of the order for Pittsburgh. That's an 8. An 8 is a K. So, he strikes out for his second time. And that is two outs in the inning. So, inning started off with a triple from Hoke. Intentional walk to Mazeroski. And then the pitcher laid down a bunt. Puts us. Um, and then we have the strikeout of Verdon. So, Groat is up next. A shortstop. And uh, he is also a C. That's a 12. 12 for Groat is going to be a fly ball. Let's see what happens here. And for a C, it's just a fly ball to right field. A little can of corn ends the inning, ends the threat, and the Yankees get out of that one <clears throat> uh, without allowing a run. So the score is now still three to two, uh, Pittsburgh over New York. So you get uh, no outs, runner on second, and one two. We're back to the top of the order. So Bobby Richardson for the Yankees. He's going to be a D. So let's see what we got here. Nobody out. We'll just we'll play it straight up here with Bobby Richardson. He's a D batter. Not a very scary batter. Ground ball. For a D, ground ball to short. If there's a runner on first, then it's a double play. <clears throat> the runner's going to hold. I'm going to assume that it's in front of him. So he's going to hold there. So 6-3 on the put out. So that's one out in the inning. Next up is Tony Kubek. And that's an eight. Eight to Kubek is a strikeout. It's two quick outs in the inning. Runner still hasn't moved from second base, but it brings up uh, Roger Maris to the plate. Maris is an A. So let's see what happens here. That's a six. A six is going to be a walk. Tamaris. 
So two on now, two outs, and that brings up Mickey Mantle. Mantle with a nine is going to be a K. So he strikes out to end the inning, to end the threat. And so two were left on in that inning, but nobody scored. Um, still three to two, Pittsburgh going into the bottom of the fifth inning. So there's two on and nobody out. So something brewing for Pittsburgh. And they're going to go down one, two, three. It's going to be Clemente uh, who homered uh, back in the first, second, third inning. He homered in the third inning. Uh, we'll leave that. And he is a C. So. Roll those dice. There's a nine. Nine's gonna be a fly ball. Let's see what he's got. For a C, that's gonna be a ground roll double to right center. So high fly ball, hits the dirt, skips over the fence. That's gonna be a double. Uh, with nobody out, we say one, two, one, two, and then a runner at second. So that's gonna be a one RBI double for Clemente. Next batter is Burgess. Burgess is a C. A nine. It's gonna be another fly ball. And for a C, that's a fly out to left. I'm not gonna chance it with two runners in scoring position. So that puts uh, one out in the inning, and Hoke is up to up to the plate. A five is gonna be a strikeout. A big opportunity here, Bill Mazeroski stands in with two outs, two ducks on the pond. There's a seven, that's going to be a fly ball. Let's see what happens here. And for a D, that's going to be a fly out to center field. So the Yankees get out of that situation again, uh, having given up only the one run. Score is now four to two, Pittsburgh over New York. And... We'll set the next half inning going into the sixth inning. Nobody out, nobody on. Next batter down is Yogi Berra. <clears throat> Berra with his first at bat in this game. He is a, a C. Bill Scourin, bat next. That's a 10. 10 is going to be a walk to Yogi. That does <clears throat> bring up the first baseman, Scourin. Scourin was a B that season. <clears throat> Had a good season. And it's going to be a 7. 7 is a fly ball. For a B, that's going to be a bloop single down the left field line. So that's a single for Bill Scourin. Um, so he had a runner on first with the walk. Um, now runners at first and second on the bloop. Let's go ahead and uh, play the infield at double play depth. And it's Blanchard up to bat. He's a D. So that's an 11. 11 is going to be a K. So it's a strikeout first out of the inning. Still going to be playing a double play depth here. Next batter is Cleet Boyer. <clears throat> That's going to be a six. Fly ball from Boyer. Who is a D is a fly out to short right field. So no advancement there. And two outs in the inning. And we'll take off the double play depth. Play everybody back in regular positions. Uh, pitcher spot is up. Again, I might normally pinch hit here, but I'm not going to play pinch hitters in this, this particular game. <clears throat> it just requires looking up some people. I don't really want to do that. Uh, so we have an E for the pitcher, and a 5 is going to be a ground ball. And that's going to be a tapper to the catcher. So with two outs, it's just going to go 2-3 on the putout. And Pittsburgh gets out of that 
uh, no runs scored from the Yankees and preserves the lead four to two for Pittsburgh. And we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. <clears throat> two outs, run around second for Pittsburgh. And we say one, two, three, four. It's going to be Skinner up to the plate with his his first at bat of the day. So that's me a nine. Nine is a fly ball. Let's pull our last fly ball card here. And that's going to be a fly ball to the warning track in left field. Uh, not going to advance. I'm not going to try to advance on that. So, Murder stays here. Well, there's no advance anyway. Two outs right. So, almost hit it out of the ballpark. But not quite. So the lead stays at 4-2, to two, uh, Pittsburgh over New York. This is the 1960 Game 7, uh, 1960 World Series. Yankees get runners on the corners, one out. And Mickey Mantle comes to the plate. So big time situation here for Mantle. Definitely going to play a double play depth here. And we're going to play let's go and play the outfield back as well. So we have a couple of uh, situations going on here. We'll flip our fly balls. You can reshuffle these if you want. Uh, there's enough random things happening in the game that it's probably not even necessary to, to do that because each time these things come up, you know, it's a different player, different situation. So runners at the corners, one out, playing double play and playing the outfield back. So we're cutting off any uh, big plays. Mantle is up to bat. That's a nine. Nine is going to be a K. So he has had very little luck today. Actually struck out three times and that brings up Yogi Berra. Berra is a C. So two outs now. I'm going to pull this back. I'm going to keep the infield or keep the outfield back uh, just in case, just to prevent any doubles or a triple becomes a double. Um, diving catches, bloopers, you know, those are uh, singles. And doubles become flyouts. Short fly balls, we have to roll to see if there's an out. So that's a two. A two for Bear is going to be a home run, so he comes through for the Yanks. Ties the ball game with a two-run home run in the top of the seventh inning. So a huge home run for Yogi Berra. Still two outs in the inning. Outfield back didn't matter on that one. Everybody's playing at uh, normal depth, and it's going to be Bill Scourin. Scourin is a B. That's going to be a seven, so a fly ball for Bill Scourin. And this will be a fly out to left field, but not before the damage is done. Yogi Berra goes yard, two run home run, and that ties the ball game at two, three, four to four. Go to the bottom of the seventh inning, all tied up. Pirates get bases loaded here with two outs. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Pitcher spot up. Again, normally I would pinch hit in this situation, but not pinch hitting in this game, so we're going to use the E card, and that's an 8, that's going to get a strikeout. So, pitcher strikes out. To end the inning, Yankees get out of the jam. Bases loaded jam, don't give up any runs, and that keeps the score tied at 4. Top of the 8th inning, 2 outs, nobody on. And 1, 2, 3, pitcher spot up. Again, not pinch hitting. When it normally would, seven is going to be a ground ball. 
for a D, a ground ball is to first base. So easy, uh, easy put out there. We'll say 3 1 on the put out, and the Yankees go down in order. So that's going to be uh, still 4 to 4 going into the bottom of the eighth inning. It's only a couple of cards left here, you can see. A couple of chances to score. Two outs, runner at third. And one, two, three, four. Nelson, the first baseman, is up to bat. Nelson is a C. See if we have some late game heroics in this game. A nine. A nine is going to be a fly ball. Let's see what happens with the fly ball. He is a C. Oh, it's a double to left center. So a two bagger from Nelson. That's going to score this run from third. Put a runner at second, and the Pirates take the lead on the RBI double from Nelson. Clemente steps in. He's also a C. That's a seven. Seven's a fly ball. Clemente is a C. That's going to be a fly to right field. Runner holds at second base. And Burgess, the catcher, stand. Oh, actually, that's uh, three outs in the inning, right? So it's over. Okay, but they do get one. <clears throat> they do get one on the RBI double from the first base in Nelson. And the Pirates take a 5-4 to four lead. They take a 5-4 lead into the top of the ninth inning. So the Yankees, one last opportunity here to try to tie it up. Uh, one out and one on. And they're going to go 1-2-3. This is going to be Roger Maris up to the plate. It's at the heart of their order. Maris is not going to bunt. It could be a waste of the situation here. He has, uh, if he rolls a four, a four is a pretty good opportunity for a home run. So uh, we're going to let Roger Maris do that. Um, Let's play the infield at double play depth just to increase that opportunity. But uh, we're going to play the outfield normal at this point. That's a seven. Seven is going to be a ground ball. Ground ball for an A is a ground ball to the shortstop. If there's a runner on first, then it's a double play. So that is going to be uh, a double play. Uh, six, four, three. Yep. So we're going to say 6 4 3. That ends the ball game. So the Pittsburgh Pirates go home on uh, with a win. So just like a little less dramatic than real life. Uh, but they still do win game seven of the World Series. They win 2 3 4 5 2 4 over the Yankees. And that is uh, sort of a demo. Well, not sort of a demo. That is a demo of tabletop uh, baseball manager. So a little bit of uh, elements of traditional tabletop baseball game with these uh, with these management cards kind of thrown in. And, and it really depends on how you like to play as a manager or how you want to play. Do you want to be aggressive or do you want to be a little bit more passive? Um, you know, maybe you wanted to steal a little bit more and see how that works but um, like I said this will be available as a demo pretty soon I need to go through and make sure that all the cards are set right and everything is okay uh, if you have any suggestions or any comments for this for this demo as you're watching it uh, just put them down in the comment section below I'll also post this to Facebook I'll post it to the Delphi forums as well and then uh, maybe everybody can get a a chance to check this out. Uh, there's another video, and I'll uh, you'll probably see it recommended uh, that that talks about each of the different components. But I think you can see just how the the components work together here. All right. Well, thanks for watching, and.